You want to be faster, better, stronger? In a design. Well, you come to the right place, I'm going to teach you guys 10 things that will definitely make your workflow faster. If you're not using one, two, or three, I don't know what you're doing. Oh, and stick around for the last one where I have a bit of a controversial one. So we will need InDesign for today's tutorial. If you want, grab that in the description, help the channel out. And for students, I believe it's about 50% off, which is a great deal for all the Adobe apps. So let's get straight into it. Okay, number one, I'm not sure how you're living in InDesign if you don't really know this, but it has to do with scaling and fitting the image. Anytime you bring in an image into InDesign, it's going to have like a really weird resolution. So, you know, you can do right click fitting, fit content proportionally, but really the better way to do it and the way that you should be doing it is just to memorize the actual shortcut key so that you just do it all the time. And I'll put the shortcut key down below and you just use the fingers. Remember that. Okay. Number two is also another one where it's like, if you're not using it, how are you surviving? But it is the W key to actually preview your page. Now, a lot of people might know that, but what about shift W to go into presentation mode? It makes all the images into the correct resolution and you can go left and right to flip through your actual magazine. Let me know if you do that one. Okay, so you guys know how to zoom in and out of the page itself, but what if I just want to zoom to the extent of my page? Well, do that by using control zero. And here, get this. Here's an even cooler version of that where if you want to zoom out to the spread, control alt zero. Boom, centered, you're ready to go. All right, speaking about size and how it matters, we're going to go straight into how to change the text size on your actual publication. So this is really helpful when you're just in the beginning trying to figure out what size text works for you. But we can actually do, instead of going in here and testing all these out by clicking and doing all this, you can actually do the shortcut key, control shift, and then you just go left and right with these bracket keys, I think. Test this out, just kind of see what works for your publication. I actually use this shortcut key a lot more than just changing it manually. Okay, so next one is going to color swatches. I don't know if you guys have ever tried this, but going into InDesign, you click into the swatch and you're like, oh my God, that's it? That's, that's all I gotta work with? What's going on here? Well, you've probably got a bunch of colors that you wanna work with. And I really suggest that you guys add your swatches in the very beginning. So you can do that by going into the stroke and the fill, go into new color swatch and just put in your actual color. Now, it's gonna default to CYMK, which a lot of people, are, including me, were not familiar with when I first saw it. You can bypass that by just going straight into HSB and boom, copy the hex over. I think I've memorized mine by heart. That is the gray that we use for all of our stuff on this channel. And boom, there I have in my swatch. And every time I can just go in, if I wanna change my title to that, well, this would actually change the fill, but you get the point. Add your swatches, it'll save a lot of time. All right guys, today's sponsor is me. If you guys want, check out our website. It's got a host of really great resources. I actually do a step-by-step -step guide, text for all the tutorials that you guys are watching. I have some templates that you guys can check out, purchase. All of my previous tutorials are on there. You can also see the templates there, what images I use, etc., etc. So great resource to check that out. And if you guys learn anything, also hit subscribe. Thank you. Okay, six. If you have ever watched any of my other tutorials, you'll probably know this one and it's the copy key. And it's basically to copy things while holding down a single key. So you can see here that if I wanna copy this title, boom, 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 all while just holding the alt key. Now I've always gotten this confused, but on Mac, is it command? Let me know in the comments. All right, number seven is something that blew my mind when I first figured out how it works and now I have it on all the time because I can't live without it. It is the actual dynamic spell checker. InDesign doesn't natively spell check your publication, but you can actually turn that on by going into edit, go into spelling and make sure dynamic spelling is checked on. And then you will see all these beautiful red squiggles on your page where they probably weren't there before if you just got InDesign. Eight. So you guys are going to not like this one too much, but I'm going to tell you that making paragraph styles is super, super important for whatever you're trying to do. You can enable paragraph style by going into window, styles, paragraph styles. So you can see that in my document, I have it all nice and set up, but I'll show you what it does. 
So if I go ahead and create a new text box and I'm just gonna fill it up with some placeholder text, you can see that it's coming in at a very weird size and everything. I want it to match what's going on beside it. Thankfully, I have that set up already over here, which is body L11 and boom, you can see it matches exactly what's going on to the left. So just a quick crash course on this. If you want to create your own paragraph style, I would go ahead and just adjust the text to whatever you think would fit. So for example, this title text, and you can go ahead and go to the bottom here, add this, and I'm just going to edit this and change the title to test hit. Okay. And then now you can basically click on any text element and then change it to your actual text and it'll match. So that's a quick crash course on how to create a paragraph style. Okay, tip nine is about locking stuff that you don't actually want to move. So a lot of times there might be a lot of different elements on your page. You might want the text to move, but not the images. So what you can actually do is select the elements that you don't want to move, hit Control or Command L to lock these guys. You can see that I can't select them anymore and then move everything else that you want to move other than the ones that can't move. Now, if you want to unlock this, all you have to do is control alt L and you can see that unlocks basically everything that I've locked and now you can move them again. Super simple, but super effective. Okay. 10. I can't believe I'm having this one at the very last, but I think it is one of the most important things that you can do for any publication or magazine. And it's going to be setting up your parent pages. And basically what a parent page is, if I click into your parent page is it's going to have these elements that show up on every page. So whatever you put in your parent page, it's going to show up. For example, let's take a look at this publication title and a, now you can see if I click on page two, it's here with the page number, page four, page six, page eight, you get the point. It's going to show up on every single one. So make sure you set up your parent pages in the pages tab, and that'll just make it a lot easier and make your magazine just look a lot better. So do that. And while we're on that topic, it's actually also super important to organize your layers just so you know what is what, and you can just switch off different elements whenever you want it. In the beginning of a document, you don't really feel as much if you have like one, two, three pages, but as soon as you get into like the tens, fifteens, 20 pages, you'll really feel that hit you when you don't have your files organized. So just trust, organize your actual layers and you'll have a way better experience working in InDesign. All right, bonus one. I'm so happy you guys made it. I really appreciate it for watching all the way to the end. But I think that working in the workspace, a central classic is far, 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 far superior than what you guys get if you just installed InDesign. Let me show you what I mean. So when you install InDesign, this is what it's going to look like where you have a very clean layout, right? Whatever you need on the right, you just bring in. But I think maybe this is just because I'm old. A central classic, if you change it to this, just makes it a lot better. And the main reason for that is it brings the property tab up top straight off the bat. If you want to change things like fill stroke, it's very easy. You can do things like changing the text and how the text bodies and, and everything behaves. You have a line for paragraphs. So I just feel like using a central classic is, is already such a hack and I would love to extend that to you guys. But again, I know that's not for everybody. So let me know what you think down in the comments below.